the markets really quickly. We have an up market. The pre-market was down, and I thought we were going to have another down day, but that was a race really fast. And you can see that the the RTY here, the Russell was leading away again today with a percent and a half, up a percent and a half. We have all the major indexes up, and we have volatility coming out of the market a little bit today, but um, but not that much based on how much it went up yesterday. It was up about 18% yesterday, and it's only down right now about a little over 2%. Um, we have an interesting, I guess it's interesting market because we have some things that are down um, that are, even though the market is up and it's usually, it's usually falling the market, we have this Microsoft position that we put on yesterday a iron condor which is down today and it's down a little bit since we put on but not too bad only about twelve dollars but this is but you know the nasdaq is up not not a lot but the the s p is up um, over a quarter percent and this this microsoft is down we put on this netflix i only wanted to put on one of these yesterday but for some reason i was in a one-on-one -on -one and forgot that i had this netflix on still so this got this got uh, this got filled as well, um, but right now this Netflix something something must be wrong on the quote because this shouldn't be um, up eighty nine dollars. Um, so that's wrong. It's fifth. It's uh, thirty eight days to go, and we only got thirty. We only got ninety two cents from it. So that is some type of bad print going on right now. Um, so we'll uh, let that let that play out and change here in a bit. And then we have we have this paychecks position that once again, we tried to do an earnings play on this and we should have got out, once, um, but we did not. So yesterday we added the call side and we're just letting this play out, see if this, if this paychecks finally gets a bid sometime this week. Um, and then we have this riot that's helping us this morning. Um, this riot is up $118 in this account. This is a cover call that we have on in here. So what we're going to look to do is um, roll this covered call out a little bit, just um, see if we can collect if we can collect a little bit more premium. This is 24 days to go. This is 31 days that we're looking here, and right now that's about 270 is the is the mid. I'm looking down here, so now I'm looking to see can I do something around the 2050, 21 for more than 270. So if I look at this 21, that's going to be a seven dollar credit so if i can get seven dollars that would be great so let's see if we can do that um if we can just get a credit for it and the joy it filled me right away and it filled me at 21 so sometimes you actually get uh, filled better than what you put in so i like that um so that gives us another dollar to the upside now with 31 days to go and so if this goes up even more, we we will roll again, but we keep rolling that call out, collecting credit for it because the call side of this riot is a lot a lot richer than the put side. So this is actually playing out very nicely with this this riot to this point. All right. So the next thing I wanted to look at this morning um, was well this afternoon I guess now I guess I can technically still say it's this morning. It's not noon yet here in um, here in Central Standard Time. All right, so I sent out some trade ideas. I sent out six trade ideas this morning. Let's look at a few of those, and we're going to do at least one. So this was a trade that we sent out with 24 days to go. Um, this is what we were doing is buying a put spread and then selling a put spread and doing that for credit to have built in a built in hedge. So if you want to look at this, how this looks on the curve view, you can see that this is the at the money and it can go down. And if it goes down and, and lands somewhere in this area, then we can make more than the dollar that we can receive on this. We can make about six hundred dollars. So I really like this trade It's bullish, but it has a built in hedge to it and you can make a little bit more if the market goes down. Obviously this morning, it looked like that would have been a really good play. It still looks like it's getting a decent amount of credit for this. You're getting a dollar for it. So if, I, if you can get a dollar for it, I would still do this, this type of trade. Um, and so 
we also put we also looked at one that was 15 days to expiration and um, doing it a little differently that was two contracts and then now looking at 15 days ago just trying to get a quick little trade out of this um, so this morning we were looking at buying the 36 25 let's look at that really quickly so that's still a 30 delta the 3625 selling the 3620 and then um, buying excuse me selling now we're selling the the put spread at the it was around the 15 delta let's see what it at it is now selling the 3500 uh, still a 15 delta buying the 3480 so 20 points wide one contract and this morning we're saying get at least 90 it's going for about 75 85 here if you're looking to do this trade i would put it in at 85 um, and you can see that the risk reward is still the same similar to that 24 day kind of concept right so you can make almost 600 dollars if you if it falls in this direction um, if it goes up, you're going to make at least one, you're going to make 85 if you hold the expiration. Obviously, we don't hold the expiration, but this is a this is a quick type of trade for us. All right, so that is the 24-day one is the one that we had highlighted. That means that we, we strongly recommend that for um, um, people who are new or people who are trying to make the monthly income, that 2 to 5% a month, strongly recommend those type of trades. All right, so this morning we also recommend, we um, not strongly, but the trade idea we had on was the Airbnb again. It was down this morning, it is up now, um, but we were looking at 38 days to expiration and we were looking at selling the 115, buying the 110, just a five point wide spread. And that was going for 83 this morning. So if, you, if you're interested in this trade, I would put it in at 83 and um, let it come to you see if airbnb falls falls down a day it's been somewhat uh volatile um, what we did do in airbnb today that we got filled on we sold the call side and we sold it for 70 cents um, and we sold it when airbnb was somewhat flat just to protect the downside so let me show you what that looks like here um, we on the put side we are at the 29 delta which is just at the high yellow area and then on this uh, call side now we're at the 30 delta which is the uh, the the high um, high yellow area as well so i i'm okay with this with 10 days to go and we'll see how it plays out we we would if we have to we'll roll up the put side to move the call side because we're okay with um with rolling this out because we're long-term bullish on this but even though we're long-term bullish on this we still want to make money short term so that's why we put on this call side to be able to collect a little bit more premium and once again it was flat when we did that now this is it's it went up three dollars so we if we were able to wait and you never know so you just have to be mechanical about the process so we just did that roll up and we're happy about that we're still up on airbnb for the day um, we're up $56 on the Airbnb. So now you can also see that this Netflix position has changed back. The 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 um, the, the bid and ask was wrong. So now is now we should be down, which is which is good. Uh, I mean, which is which is good because it's given us the correct um, um, number now. All right. So the next trade I had this morning was looking at Google and we were doing a put spread in google and with 45 days to go google is up as well now but let's see what this trade looks like because not a lot of volatility has come out of the market as i pointed out earlier and so selling this 19 excuse me where i'm at here on this google call side so selling the call side selling the 1960 so selling a call spread to get some short delta selling the 1960 buying the 1970 so 10 point wide spread this morning i was looking at it for 115 it's only going for 90 now so i would actually let that come up just in case we get a stronger market this evening or this afternoon with the market uh, with the market trying to get closer to that russell percentage why i would put this up at 115 no need to force this if you get filled i would 
hedge this in the QQQ with on the call side. When you're hedging on the call side, you want to go just that's that's 45 days. You'll find something that's 45 days if it's if you don't have or the same expiration period. If you don't have something in the same expiration period, you go something that's sooner than the expiration period that you have, and you can just buy a hedge using um, about $30 of that, including fees and commissions. And so this hedge right here is a little more expensive. So I would move this. I would move this up a little bit so I can get um, get it for around thirty dollars. All right, so um, let's look at um, the next trade that I was looking at this morning is soybeans, and let's take a look at the soybeans chart really quickly. This is the soybeans chart that I have up, and you can see that this soybeans has been rocking and rolling. This is a this is a bullish chart, big time. So it hit the high this morning, and the twelve the 12 uh, month high and if we try to take this back for let's just see let's go three three let's go three years weekly so we hit the three-year high as well right so that this is very this has been very very bullish um the soybeans so i am looking to fade the move a little bit and sell the call side um, we did this about a month ago and it worked out for us and because it paused a little bit and then we were able to win then now it shot back up so we're going to try to we're going to try to do that same concept again so looking at the the z the four slash z s and going with what is that that's 45 days to go on this trade it's been super bullish so what we're looking at is selling the call spread at the 1530 see where that's at right now so now that's a 16 delta we're at the 15 but let's say we still want to look at that 30 points wide so selling the 1530 buying the 1560 and this morning i was saying we're at least 2.5 it's going for a lot more than that so if you wait it then this is great so you can see that the buying part in this account is insignificant the max potential loss is 1300 basically um, so let's see if we can get filled on this and this is the one we're going to do in this account. Um, and then we're gonna hedge in an ETF if we get filled. And so let's see here, let's go to working. And that is trading at that point there. Let's see if um, I really want to get filled for demonstration purposes and do this. I need to have to move it down, but let's see if we move it down with this Let's see what the high was for really quickly. I'm looking, what I'm doing is going to look over here and just look right here in this column to see what the high has been. All right, so didn't have to adjust it. It just popped up and it filled us. I guess it's a lot of people. I guess it's really, really bullish right now. Um, all right, so we got filled on that. We're going to take a little bit of the capital. We received about 156 after fees and commissions, 30% of that is $46 or almost $47. So let's just say we got $47 we can use. We're not going to use that much, but I just say we did have that amount. So we're going to go to the soybeans here. And um, this is the ETF equivalent to what we were just looking at. And um, let, me just, let me just show you something why we wouldn't hedge in the actual index. Let me see here. Let's go to the call side here and let's see if we can do it, right? So it's going to be too much. So if we buy this, uh, we buy this one and sell that one. That's going to give. That's going to be about 112 before fees and commissions. So that's going to be more than what. I mean, it's going to be less than what we receive, but we're not going to get that much of a credit. It's going to be on a, only about $30 worth of a credit. So we're not going to hedge that, but it would give us some buying power to do that in the actual um, contract. So, but now we're going to go into the ETF for these soybeans, and we're going to buy. We're going to go to the 45 days because that's where the trade is at and um, we have 40 up to 47 dollars that we can use um, so what we could do we could buy uh, we could buy two shares right to hedge or we can hedge doing something like this um, which is um, you know it would give us up to 60 78 dollars um, do two contracts let's say that that'll give us up to 156 dollar hedge and that if we did two contracts that would cost us about 40 dollars a little over 40 dollars 40 50 something like that to be able to if we bought two shares to hedge 
but those two shares, if it went up, um, it would only it would only help us two dollars per share. So in this case, if we buy this hedge, this will be a better hedge. Unfortunately, that's a little bit more than what we have. Is someone trying to is someone trying to talk uh, ask a question? All right. So if not, I'm just going to mute you. Um, so let me go here and. What we're going to do, I said 48, uh, 57, 47 is one, the most I want to use. But if I if I adjust this, then it's not going to give me very much of a, uh, a hedge. So if I, I I like this 38 and I like this hedge of 156 if this keeps going up. So let's just see if they will fill us uh, at a at this mid here and see if they'll fill us at this mid. And let's give it a second. If not, we could buy the hedge here and sell the hedge there, but I don't like it because that's a that's a 24 delta. I really want a little higher than a 24 delta on the hedge. But if we did do that and we got two we did two contracts, obviously we can do that for a lot less. Um, probably won't get filled there, but let's say they make us do the 15 or something like that we would get feel something like that and it would hedge us about 170. Um, so that's a possibility as well. Um, so let's look at this and I'm gonna put it at this mid today and give a, and do 48 and be okay with that. Um, but if it doesn't feel, then we'll look at something else. All right, so that's not filling. I wanted to feel right away. Give it a second here, see if it'll feel all right, so that's not going to feel. So Brian, uh, this is. Uh, yeah. Go Hello? ahead. Yes, I'm. I'm Brian, here. go ahead. Yes. Hey. Uh, so, do you still, even with this hedge on, uh, do you do you still adjust the original position, the uh, the, the the futures with the soy when it hits like the 30 delta, or is the point of this hedge you could you know leave it on even longer than that if it goes against you? Great, great, great question, Dr. Meadows. I would, I would, I would still adjust it, not necessarily at the 30, but usually around that 30. But I just say I waited to the 35 in this case. Um, I would still adjust it, but keep my hedge on. And but my hedge is going to be making money at that point if I have to adjust that. So let's send that there. All right. So that that hedge got filled. I changed it a little bit to a 24. So it's, it's um, but it is still hedges, right? And it costs a little less. But yeah, if we go over here to this right here, go back over here, uh, uh, Dr. Mills, I would, I would, if this became a, let's just say I'm going to give it a little time, let's just say this becomes a 35 delta. Well, then I will adjust this to a full roll away and pay for it by doing the call side. And then if the, at that point, the, maybe the hedge is in the money, it would have definitely been in the money if we would have did the 38. Um, but I would then I would buy the hedge. I would sell the hedge and then buy something. Let's say buy the 40 delta again or something like that to lock in some of that hedge. Um, if the, so, let me sh show you what I mean by example. Let's just say we had a hedge on, and it went into the money like this. This is the hedge. It's in the money. So what I would do is buy this back, uh, or sell this to the market because you don't buy it back if you was a, if you originally purchased it. You sell it to the market. That will give you some capital, right? And then I would put it back on and say around the 40 delta and just say this was the hedge, right? So now you can see that I'm doing that. I'm keeping the hedge on, but adjusting it and doing it for credit. So that means I'm locking in some of that hedge um, um, profit. And then if this slows down, then, you know, then I'm going to benefit more than what that 156 that I originally received minus the, the, um, the hedge, but most of the time you're going to sell that hedge back for something, right? So let's just say right now we paid that we paid thirty four dollars or something like that for that hedge. Well, when we take that position off, let's say fifty percent, if we made fifty percent uh, after fees and commissions, then that hedge is most likely going to be worth something still. Maybe it's worth ten dollars, maybe it's worth five dollars, whatever the case may be. If if it's still worth something, I'm going to sell it back to the market, and then my original hedge is going to be less than what I had to pay. And that's going to help with my uh, my profits. All right, so I hope that I hope that's clear. And this is why I'm I'm fading the market as well because I know I still have a big adjustment because I'm not playing the put side. 
So I know I still have a big adjustment if I need to. If I need to move this away from at the money, which is at the money is up here, I still can do that. And I got the hedge that's helping me um, if this keeps going up, right? I'm betting that it's going to slow down, um, but who knows, right? It's been going just like the market, if not better than the market based on this based on this chart, right? So um, I'm going to let it I'm going to let it play out though. It hasn't been too many down days in in the last month as you can see here. Let me just highlight this really quickly. If I can get this to work. Come on, Brian. All right. So there we go. So you can see that in the, it's only been about 3 3 to 4 down days in the last, you know, month and this has been pretty fraudulent down days. So but why am I fading it? Because I believe that it's it's a very good trade, as you can see. I think it's overbought, just like the market, and so it's indirectly shorting the market. Let me bring this back up really quickly. Indirectly shorting the market. This RSI, this relative relative strength index, is indicating that it's way overbought as well, as you can see. And just looking at this, I think it's way overbought, just like the market. But that doesn't mean it's gonna it's gonna go down, right? This this it keeps going up the market, but we have had a pullback in the Russell, as you guys can see. The Russell was the the high was a 2032, so it dropped quite a bit, and so that's a that's been a decent little drop for the Russell. It doesn't very it doesn't look like it on this chart, but we did have a decent drop, especially when it hit around here. Um, but we'll we'll see if the if the Russell can get back to its highs if it. Uh, if it does, then maybe the soybeans is going to go up some more, but that's fine. We're going to we're going to let it play out and see how it and see if we can win on it or not. All right, so that is that's the trade that I'm doing this more this this afternoon. Now, um, has anybody copied that trade? Anybody doing that trade as well? All right, so let me just check this. Um, let me check the chat area here. All right, hey, O'Brien. So, Yes. Hey, it's John. How are you doing? Um, yeah, I'm doing well. Good to good to hear your voice, John. Uh, nice to be back. Thank you. Yes. Um, hey, uh, just a question on this first couple of ideas, uh, the SPX trades. I'm just curious, mm -hmm. why why did you choose to do those on the SPX index rather than on the ES futures? Is there a reason so, for that? Or? Most of the time. Um, John, I would do it on the, the ES futures because it's the same type of trade, but it's going to give you better buying power. But yeah. I was just I was just changing it up, just changing okay. it up, showing people that you can do it in the SPX and and then you don't have to worry about any type of margining uh, adjusting because they're going to require you to put up your max loss up front on that SPX cash settled index. So that's the only reason. Um, but you're going to going forward, you're going to see me do a lot of those type of trades. Um, this is going to be the primary trade in this account that I was talking about on Monday, this uh, this smaller account that we're only going to do um, indexes. So you can see the performance from doing all the kind of stuff that we teach from course one to course uh, three in the Doring Way School. We're going to demonstrate that in that uh, Tastyworks account. But in this account, we're going to go we're going to go just to the indexes, what I call bread and butter type of trade. No, it's not sexy, but you can make a ton of money just uh, playing the indexes, right? So I in this see. case, we're we're doing that here, and this is the in this account. That's only going to be the only kind of thing that we do. Yesterday, we put on that same type of trade in the SPX in this account, and the market fell right. It fell pretty decently after we right after we put it on, but that's fine. Didn't have to adjust this. This is very low maintenance type of stuff. You can see that this is a 20 delta on uh, or the probability in the money. That's what we use on the Think Thinkorswim platform, probability in the money. Uh, so we're saying that's a delta, that's a 20. This is the hedge that's attached to it, that's a 37. So we wouldn't adjust this until it's probably around the 35. And then if we adjust it, we will move it by adding something to the opposite side. And most likely you won't have to add it uh, no higher than 15 or 20 delta to the opposite side if you do it. But I'm betting that most of the time um, like almost 100% of the time, let's just say, um, I just give you a number. Uh, you know, 80% of the time, you won't you won't even have to adjust these type of trades, and you guys will see how well this works out. All right, so okay. 
Um, Thank you. You are very but just, just to be clear, you, you you could do the same thing in the ES, though, right? I mean, if you wanted Correct. to. So, yeah. so, for example, if we wanted to do that same thing in the ES, you, you guys notice that that, and I just show, let me, let me just show the difference really quickly. Um, so let's go to that first one that we were looking at, um, everyone. I'm going to go to this first one here. We were looking at, second, I'm bringing it back up. All right, so the 24-day one we were looking at. And let's, let's go to that one really quickly. And 24 days, and we were buying the, let me see what I'm looking at here. Um, one second. All right, so we were buying the the 35, um, the 35.95. So buying the 35.95, let me get there really quickly. Uh, buying this one, selling this one. So this is the hedge part. And then we were selling the 34.45. So selling the 34.45, let me get that faster. All right, come on. All right, there we go. So selling the 34.45 and buying the 34.35. And we were doing two contracts of this one. And we were getting, and so this is, we were looking for at least 115. Um, you can probably put that in at 115 or 105. It all depends on what you like, right? So I was looking at the 115, but the 105 is fine as well. So you can see that this right here, if we do the 115, um, that's how much the credit you're going to receive. You can see that the the buying power effect is 1385. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now if we do that same type of trade, and that's 24 days ago, we go into ES and we look for 24 days ago. So we got something that's very similar here. And let's just go to the, uh, once again, let's go to the same strikes. So the 3595, um, 3595. Some of my eyes are not working very well today. 3595. And then, then we're going to go to the um, 3445. And it's gonna we're gonna have to do this a little different because it's half the size. Um, so we're gonna have to do a couple. We're gonna have to do two buying two and selling four to, so it can be equivalent. Right? Okay. So, so in this case we're going. It's gonna be the same risk, but we have to do it that way. So this is the 34, 40, the 34, 45. So we're gonna do we're gonna do uh, uh, four here. And then we're going to unhighlight that, and then we're going to go and do two here. And if you're on the Tastyworks platform, you have to do this in two trades. If you, uh, John, you're on the Thinkorswim platform, so you can do this I, in one trade. Uh, yep. You can do this in one trade. So you can see here that the risk is pretty much the same if we made this 115, right? It's saying one, uh, one, one dollar right now, but if we made it 115. The risk is the same, the max loss is the same, but the buying power effect is a fraction. It was almost $1,400 in buying power. Now it's only four, 400, right? Okay. Um, so this is why I, prime, most of the time, I would do it in this um, account, um, but it, you can't do it in concert, as that's why it's telling you this is not supported yet um, in the Tastyworks uh, account. But uh, there you go. Okay, great, thank, thank you. you. You're welcome.